Hi there, and welcome back to the Live, Learn, and Play podcast. I'm your host, Rebecca Brockman. On this podcast, we talk about the people, places, and programs at Arkansas Children's. Our mission is to champion children by making them better today and healthier tomorrow. Happy Nurses Week! Nurses Week runs May 6th through May 12th, and at Arkansas Children's, we love our nurses. To celebrate Nurses Week, we sat down with Matt Whaley, a transport nurse with Angel One. We talked to Matt about the unique services that Angel One provides, heard some stories from his past 15 years here, and also about what makes being a nurse different at Arkansas Children's. And now, here's Matt. Hi there, we are back with the Live, Learn, and Play podcast, and today we're talking with Matt Whaley. He is a transport nurse with Angel One at Arkansas Children's. Matt, welcome to today's podcast. Thank you. All right, first of all, a lot of people know about Angel One for your helicopters. I know there's ambulances, but there's something about when you say Angel One, they think of the blue and red helicopters that we see flying through the air. And we were chatting before we started recording that most people have some sort of personal connection and story about Angel One. That is correct, yeah. The two helicopters are our most visible uh, and probably the most exciting part of our program. Uh, They're very good. you know, they're, they're recognizable and they represent Children's Hospital very well. But we do, you are correct, have uh, four uh, state-of-the-art ambulances. They're highly specialized um, in that we have capabilities on those ambulances that most ambulances around the state don't have. And that has to go, uh, has to do with all the specialization we do with our neonatal transports and other things. Uh, so anywhere we go that we will fly, if the weather's bad and puts us on the ground, then we will go by ambulance as well. Uh, and then for our longer trips, because we have gone from California to the East Coast as well, uh, we have access to a third-party fixed wing, either a, a, a twin-engine propeller plane or, or jets. Are there any certain stories or scenarios that stand out from your past, from your time on Angel One? Gosh, there are so many. It would be hard to pinpoint one in particular. Um, I will say that the uh, the nomination from the family for the DAISY Award came from a a parent that had a special needs child with a seizure disorder and I have a daughter with special needs and a seizure disorder so I was able to share with her some of my personal experiences with my daughter Um, and I I think that really made an impression with her and uh, with the mom and uh, it's just really nice to be able to share those stories and, and kind of connect that way. And congratulations on your recent DAISY Award. Um, For those of not familiar, it is um, is a quarterly award? Quarterly Quarterly award. And I'm sure you know more about the DAISY Award than I do, but Matt was a recent recipient of the DAISY Award. And it's a nomination comes from the family? Well, it can come from your coworkers as well. Okay. Um, And the, the nominations just go to a committee, and they decide, they read over all the nominations and decide who, who is the winner for that quarter. So what uh, did receiving that award mean to you? Oh, gosh. Uh, You know, I've been here, like I said, 14 years. I've seen people um, getting the DAISY Award, and I've had several nominations in the past. I've just never actually won it. So it was uh, quite an honor, Um, and they surprised me. They came up to the fifth floor where we, you know, stay on our transport shift, and uh, I had no idea that it was coming. So it was really a special thing for me, and it's something that, that I really cherish, and it's quite an honor. Excellent. So everybody knows about Angel One, but tell us a little bit about yourself and when did you know that you wanted to pursue a career in nursing? Well, um, my, pretty much my whole adult life has been in emergency medicine. I started out as an EMT when I was about 20 and I went on to paramedic school and I worked in Hot Springs actually uh, for an ambulance service there, the old St. Joe uh, Hospital. I did that for several years, then I moved to Texas and worked for East Texas Medical Center there. And while I was there, I went to nursing school. Uh, And it was kind of always my goal, Uh, but I moved to Texas because I could get a schedule there that would allow me to go to nursing school while I worked full time. So I did that and worked in an adult level one trauma center ER there for about three and a half years and came back home to Arkansas. And I came to work at Children's in the ER and I've been here at Children's ever since. So you mentioned the ambulances were specialized. Tell us a little bit more for our listeners, help them understand what makes them so special. Well, we have capabilities on our ambulances uh, that allow us to do 
Uh, well, for instance, compressed air. Most ambulances don't carry compressed air. And the reason we carry compressed air is because with our neonates, they don't always need 100% oxygen. So we are able to, with our isolates and through the ambulances and the aircraft, um, blend in a specific percentage of oxygen and wean that oxygen requirement on the way back. Um, and that is something that if, if we were in someone else's ambulance, say, and they were transporting us, we would either have to give no oxygen or 100% oxygen. There's no in-between. So that's, that's one of the ways. The other thing is our ambulances are much bigger than the ambulances you see on the street. Uh, and that allows us to have access to both sides of our patient. Uh, and it's just, it, we do also uh, mobile ECMO and that requires a lot of extra equipment and requires more space. So those, those are some of the things that uh, specialize our ambulances. And for those of us who are not familiar with ECMO, can you tell us just a little bit more about what that, what that means? Sure. Uh, it stands for extracorporeal membrane oxygenation, and basically it's kind of like a heart-lung bypass. It lets the, if, some, if somebody's lungs are not working uh, very well, then we can get their blood oxygenated, kind of do the job of their lungs, and we can also take some of the load off of their heart. Um, so that is something that we do at this hospital, and there are several other hospitals around the nation that do it, but there are not that many transport services that will do mobile ECMO. And that is taking a patient that's on ECMO and transporting them while they're still on ECMO. So we have that capability. That's amazing. So parents here in Arkansas can know and rest assured that that they are that there is a mobile unit that could help their child on their way to Arkansas Children's or Arkansas Children's Northwest. Absolutely. And just a kind of an interesting story. Um, because we are one of the few transport services in the nation that can do that, we actually, a few years ago, were called to go to Las Vegas, Nevada, to pick up a patient that was on ECMO to take them to Palo Alto, California. So they don't all necessarily come here, but because we had the mobile ECMO capability, they called us from, that, from Las Vegas to take a patient to California. So I think that says something for our service. That, that is amazing. So you're championing children, not just here in Arkansas, but across the country. Truly. So locally, how do you champion children here at Arkansas Children's? Well, we are a highly specialized team. We're a neonatal and pediatric transport team. So all of our nurses and respiratory therapists uh, are required to maintain, to obtain and maintain additional certifications and training uh, that you wouldn't typically have to have as a, as a nurse. Uh, we have neonatal resuscitation. We have fetal monitoring because we do high-risk OB transports. Um, we have to keep burn certification, trauma certification, just a whole list of certifications. So we're constantly working on continuing education for those uh, and keeping our skills up. We also go quarterly over to the Pulse Center, that's our simulation lab, and uh, we do scenarios on the neonatal side and the pediatric side with our medical control doctors. Um, and we have to go over to the med center and do training over there in the neonatal resuscitation room and attend deliveries over there. So those, we're constantly busy keeping up with those extra skills and requirements. And you definitely just touched on this, like how being a nurse at Arkansas Children's is different and your experience on Angel One is, is definitely different. Um, could you just talk a little bit about why being a patient here at Arkansas Children's is different? Well, there's a number of reasons. This is a great place to work, number one. Uh, I've been at several different hospitals through my career, and this is hands down the best place I've ever worked. Um, but being at Children's, I, I will tell you, I did adult care before I came to Children's, and I, you know, you'd get the occasional child in the ER, but I was a little reticent about coming here and taking care of kids all the time. Uh, once I got here and started doing it, though, it didn't take me very long to realize that that's, that's where I wanted to be. Um, because I'm kind of a nerd at heart, and I can, uh, I can act like a nerd in front of the kids, and it's okay. They think it's fun, or, you know, it kind of relaxes them sometimes, and so it allows me to relax a little bit and, you know, interact with the patients a little more. It's just, it's, it's where, where I feel like I need to be. And you mentioned b before we started recording that you were first in our emergency department here at Arkansas Children's, and now you're with Angel One. What, um, what kind of talk a little bit about the differences that the patient interaction that you, that you experience between the two departments? Well, in the emergency department, it's a very fast paced environment. Uh, you have several patients at one time. Um, so you don't really get to 
connect all that much with them because you're really you're going from one thing to the next in the ER. Um, the other thing is once the patient leaves the ER, whether they've been discharged home or whether they've been admitted upstairs, there's, you don't really get a lot of follow-up from the emergency department. So on Angel One, we do get that time when we're one-on-one -on -one with them during the transport um, to connect, and then we follow up. We take a lot of ownership of our patients, and we go and we see them. For as long as they're in the hospital, we'll go and check on them and talk with the families and just see how the child's doing. Uh, so we do get that kind of ongoing uh, care and the follow-up. Is there a quote-unquote normal day of what your day looks like being a transport nurse? Well, one of the things about transport is you, uh, you never know what's going to happen during your shift. You'll never know where you're going to end up because uh, there may come a, you know, a trip for out of state, just pop up on the board, and you may go that day. Um, so you have to kind of be prepared for that. Um, you also have to be prepared to get off late because our trips come in when they come in. And it may be right at the end of your shift, and our typical trip is, you know, three to four hours in length uh, if we fly. They're longer if we drive. So if you get one of those towards the end of your shift, you're not going to get off on time. So you just have to be prepared for that. Your family has to be prepared for that as well. Typically when we come in in the mornings, we have equipment checks that we have to do. And so we, you know, we log our count, count all of our uh, drug packs, and we go through all of our equipment, make sure it's all there, not expired. And we check the aircraft for supplies and oxygen levels and all of that stuff, just typical stuff that you would do to make sure you're ready for the day. Once all of that's complete, uh, we go to a, a shift uh, briefing. So at the beginning of each shift, day and night, uh, we get together with all the pilots, the EMTs, the mechanics, the dispatchers, everybody's together and we go over what's the weather for that day, what pending trips are there, what safety issues do we know about or can we anticipate, just a general safety briefing for that shift. Once that's complete, it's basically just waiting on, on that referral to come from the, from the other hospitals. Uh, but during that downtime, we're working on, like I said, those other uh, certifications and that continuing education. That's a, it's a very, I think there's a fascination around Angel One and, and how uh, you take care of children here in the, in the state and beyond. So thank you for sharing that, that insight. Is there anything else uh, you would like our listeners to know about what it's, what it's like to be a nurse at Arkansas's uh, only health care system? Well, you know, this is, like I said, where my heart is, is located. I'm just thrilled to be able to, to take care of children, and I'm, I'm so honored to be a part of the Angel One team because it really is an elite group of nurses and therapists that, that take care of these kiddos on these transports. Um, we are afforded so much responsibility and trust from our medical directors in the, in the things that they allow us to do and all of that, so it's quite an honor to be on the team, but just working at Children's in general is an honor because um, people are trusting you with their children. You know, it's one thing to take care of adults, and we all do the best we can with adults, but when you really think about these people, these parents are trusting us with their children. If you think about the impact of that and the, how the, the weight of it, you know, that's a lot of responsibility. So it's, it's an honor to, to be able to work here and do that. It's also just a big family. I mean, everybody is so friendly. I, you know, I go to other hospitals all the time on my transport job, and nobody is as friendly as they are here. And so it's just really a nice place to be. Well, we are glad you're here, and we appreciate how you champion children here at Arkansas Children's and beyond. And we thank you for your time today. Thank you so much. It's always so inspirational to hear about what happens uh, with Angel One and to hear about the kind of support that they give our nurses and our care team here at Arkansas Children's. We are fortunate to have the nurses here who champion children 24 hours a day, 365 days a year. Again, happy Nurses Week. We love our nurses here at Arkansas Children's and we love to share their stories. Please like and review wherever you get your podcast. And be sure to tune in next time for a new episode. Thanks for listening.